Hi everybody, welcome back to Project Happy Home. For those of you who are new here, I'm Tanya, a doctor, lawyer, turned homeschool mom of three kids ages 14, 11, and nine. In today's sponsored video, I'll be sharing with you about teaching textbooks and why we chose it for my middle child's fifth grade homeschool math, as well as why we are going to be continuing with it for sixth grade math. If you are interested in videos about secular homeschooling, raising a child with ADHD, and living a more essentialist life as a mom in her 40s, you have come to the right place, so be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. So teaching textbooks has been on my radar as a math curricula for a very long time. If you followed this channel for years, I think this is year nine now, uh, you will know that we've always used a mix of math resources in our house. Everything ranging from arithmetic books like a Becca arithmetic books to manipulatives to uh, math mammoth, etc. And uh, that combination of resources has always worked well for the majority of my children. My middle child, towards the beginning middle of fourth grade, started to experience a lot of difficulty just progressing through our current math curricula. And that difficulty led to some push and pull between her and I in terms of getting through a math lesson. The push and pull and the argumentativeness that was developing was eroding a little bit at our school day relationship. And to me in homeschool, relationship is the most important thing. The reason that I homeschool my children has a lot to do with my eldest having ADHD, but it also has a lot to do with developing really strong bonds between us, you know, as a family, uh, both between myself and my children and my children together. And having this sort of contentious battle of wills during math was starting to fray at the edges of that relationship a little bit. And so in an effort to repair that, I started looking at other options for math. and. Teaching textbooks came up to the top of my list of things to try because I felt like having a separate instructor would go a long way in removing some of the shame, blame, you know, impatience game that had developed between us. And I think that having a different voice teaching her apart from me really helped her kind of shore up her confidence and develop her skills without having the habitual relationship that we had kind of developed around math where she came into it a little bit stressed i came into it a little bit stressed no matter what our intentions were at the beginning whether we had the best intentions or not sometimes having that expectation of difficulty can sort of sour the lesson and make the learning that much harder and i'm happy to report that having teaching textbooks has really improved her math confidence has really repaired that relationship between us so for those of you who are unfamiliar with what teaching textbooks is it's a fully online math curricula it is really nice because although it is an online program you can actually access it offline as well and it will record your data you can also download lessons let's say you're going camping or something on our way from wi-fi so all of those options exist it is accessible through your smartphone your tablet your computer whatever service you desire and you can also print out the textbook so if you have a child who responds best to having like an actual textbook to learn from to review from etc you can totally do that for your kid it doesn't work as a subscription so much as an online purchase of time so you have online access for 12 months plus three months at the end so for example let's say you wanted to go on vacation and so you're taking two months off or something you can actually tack that two months on to the end or even if you take a week here and a week there you can tack on up to three months of time to account for those little gaps in your school year there is a large family discount available for families that have four to eight children, so be sure to look into that if that applies to you. One of the nicest features about teaching textbooks is that they offer a free trial that is a true free trial. You don't give them any of your credit card information, nothing, and they give you 15 lessons free for whatever grade level you select. And if you are confused about which grade levels your child should be placed in, they do have online placement tests available. So be sure to do that before you purchase a grade level because sometimes, you might think that your child should place at the grade level that they're chronologically in right now, but they might actually place ahead or a little bit behind. And that actually will set your child up for success better so that they shore up any of their weak spots if they need a little bit of catching up. And if they're ahead, then you don't waste a year and you can go straight into the next level. So for example, for my daughter in mid fifth grade, we tested her on the placement test and she actually placed into the sixth grade level. So for the past six months, she has been doing the level six teaching textbooks course curricula and she has enjoyed it so much. She plans to finish that in the first half of her sixth grade year and then continue straight into teaching textbooks seven. 
I have asked her about her favorite things about it and basically what she says is that she loves that there's a lesson at the beginning that they give you practice problems so you have a chance to kind of figure out whether you really understood the lesson or not before you get into the actual graded problem set. For my daughter, who's a little bit of a perfectionist, that has been ideal because those little practice problems give her a little cushion, you know, so she doesn't feel like, oh, I don't know it. I'm so bad at math. All of those like feelings of inadequacy kind of like go away because she has those practice problems which don't count. We both also really appreciate that the program corrects her as she goes. So if she gets a problem wrong, she learns that immediately and then they offer her a chance to do it again or to see a solution. And even if she gets a problem right, if she feels a little unclear, if she feels like maybe she guessed on that or you know she's just unclear on how they got to the answer, she can view the solution in real time. They don't just give you an answer for the solution, they actually walk through the actual mechanics of the problem, which I think is really helpful. When you make a mistake, the program is also really encouraging about how that mistake was made and they're very like, you know, give it another go. Like they don't feel anything personal, right? About the fact that the child has gotten the problem wrong. I don't know about you, but as a parent who has helped a struggling math student for a while, sometimes your tension about that can translate to your child and they feel anxiety, right? And anxious about the fact that they don't know this, they're about to get it wrong, their parents gonna see that they got it wrong, all of this stuff. So here she can kind of do this in a protected bubble with the computerized program that is actually really encouraging and doesn't take anything personally. And it's been really wonderful for us in that way. So when the child opens the lesson, they actually see a didactic lesson first, but the problems are explained in a step-by-step -step format, almost like a teacher standing at a chalkboard, as opposed to, for example, in a textbook where you see this very static progression of solving the problem. Here, you'll actually see numbers being crossed out, like where you write the division problem, why you're doing that, actual key numbers being circled, etc. So seeing it performed in a real time kind of instructor format is really, really helpful, especially if you have a visual learner. A really nice feature of teaching textbooks is that you have this opportunity to do the practice problems. As I mentioned, my daughter loves that because it gives her that little cushion to make mistakes. And then you launch into the real problems. If you have scrap paper, obviously you can use scrap paper while you're working out your problems. But let's say you're on the road or your car schooling or something. There's actually a scratch pad option on the app so that kids can have a scratch pad area where they can freely write uh, with a pencil, with a stylus, whatever, with their finger and solve problems that way as well. It's a really nice additional feature that allows you to homeschool on the go really easily. After a certain number of lessons, there's built-in quizzes and tests. So there's automatic review as you go through. As you progress through the lessons, they also build in spiral review, which for any math curricula, I think is especially important because sometimes you can do one whole lesson on, let's say, percentages. And after that chapter is over, you completely forget what that is while you're studying fractions. Teaching textbooks doesn't let that happen because they perpetually have spiral review throughout each of the lessons. There's a lot of other little fun features that she likes, like you can change the wallpaper on your lesson board, you can change your sticker books, you can collect little prizes and things like that. You can also adjust the sound settings. If you don't want your child to have access to all of the fun bells and whistles, like the wallpaper and the stickers and the changing the sound options, you can actually shut that off for them in your parent portal. And we will go through the parent portal a little bit so you can see exactly how those controls look. Okay, you guys, just to show you what you see on the parent portal, you'll see the grade book here, the answer key and ebook. Again, you can print out the entire ebook if that helps you or your student. You can change student settings and you can manage courses here. So for example, if you have multiple children on teaching textbooks, this would be where you would see all of their information. So when, so you, when you go to manage courses, for example, you can pause all the enrollments. For example, if you're going on vacation, you can click to pause just one lesson. So I might have another posted here for another student, another posted here for another student. Under the settings, you can actually change whether you have hints on, whether you have second chances on, and for what. I'm actually going to take off second chances for quizzes for right now, but I'm going to allow scratch pad, for example. I'm going to allow the animation and sound effects. I'm going to show the hints on quizzes. Probably going to take that off and then show on regular assignments instead. So that's something I'm changing right now. You can also go to wallpaper and stickers. You can allow just simple wallpapers, no wallpapers, all wallpapers. You can turn on and off stickers. You can put sticker customization here. I'm actually going to put stuff that they both may love. So I'm glad that I'm looking at this right now. So here, when you view the grade book, you can see the overall course average. You can see exactly how much time is left on one screen. 
And you can see D for done. So the lesson's been completed. You can see exactly how many problems were answered, how many she got correct, the percentage score, and the date of the work on that assignment. Last work means the last time she opened that assignment to work on it. And you can actually view the grade on every single problem if you wanted a detailed analysis. So for example, on one that you got 91% on, you could actually view that and it'll show you like problem by problem, which one she got right and which one she got wrong. So when you review that or you can go back into that lesson, you can work on that with them. You also viewing the answer key in ebook also gives you the option of looking at the ebook in its entirety and printing it. So when you look at the ebook, you can look at the table of contents, the answer key, or each of the lessons here individually. For example, if you're looking at lesson 23, you would see this type of document that you can print out. It has the practice areas for them. It has all the different problem sets. So if you wanted to print out just this lesson, you could do it to review with them, etc. So I hope that little walkthrough was helpful to you guys. When I asked my daughter what she liked best about teaching textbooks, she said that she really likes how it explains everything in real time when she makes a mistake so that she doesn't kind of get further and further into her mistakes where she feels like this sort of desperation of having done three or four of them wrong, knowing she's not done them correctly and not knowing how to fix it. She also really likes that she gets to do it on her own without me, which, you know, it's a little bit insulting, but I understand. Um, like I said, it's gone a long way to repairing the trust and bond between us, especially in the area of math. She's so proud of herself when she gets to show me her quiz grades, etc. I will say that I do review the problems with her. So I will watch her work through some of the problems sometimes just to make sure she has a good grasp on things. I think sometimes when we have an online curricula or a completely hands-off curricula, you fall into a little lull where you don't look at them at all. And I don't recommend that because it's nice for them, honestly, to show you what they're learning. It's nice for you to know where they're at. And if you see any particular shortcuts that they're taking or something that they might have assumed that isn't correct, you can kind of fix that. Thus far, I haven't seen anything like that, honestly. Like, Teaching Textbooks has done a great job of giving her her fundamentals. I haven't really had to adjust for anything. And I think she's doing a great job retaining the information because of their built-in spiral review. When I asked her if she would change anything about teaching textbooks, she said that she wished they had fewer practice problems because sometimes you can have, I think, like over four practice problems and she thinks that's a little bit excessive. But she likes the practice problems anyway, so... It's sort of a toss up there. I don't know whether it's really a weakness or not. And she also sometimes thinks that the graphics are a little bit kiddish, but she's probably my most uh, like grown up little middle school girl. So if teaching textbooks is listening, then maybe they want to make a little bit more edgy designs for, for the middle grade levels. But in terms of content and retention, I have been very pleased, which is why we're gonna continue using teaching textbooks for next year and I will let you know with an update video how that's going. If you wanted to check out Teaching Textbooks, remember they have an entirely free 15 lesson trial that you can participate in and the link for that will be in the description box down below. I hope this has been helpful, you guys. If you have any other questions, please be sure to leave them in the comment section down below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Don't forget to take advantage of Teaching Textbooks 15 lesson free trial, again, with no credit card information or anything. All of that information will be linked in the description box down below. If you have found anything of value in this video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button and that subscribe button. Thank you so much for spending some of your time with me. I really do appreciate it and I wish you the very best day.